don't you think the person that spent like the first 14, 15, 16, 17 years of their life with that child and taught them to like, you know, use a spoon might have a little bit better understanding of how that kid learns, or at the very least would have some valuable input that you might take into consideration, not according to this person. Apparently, her mentality is just like, I have an education degree. You cannot possibly tell me anything I do not know about education. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. What's more important is a growing sentiment within the public education system that the schools just know better for your kids than the parents do. And sadly, this is something that is really not new, but it's always been there and it seems to be growing and gaining a lot of traction. It seems to be far more commonplace than it used to be. Because I mean, if you have studied anything about history, you know that, that Woodrow Wilson, for example, I mean, this is a guy that was president 100 years ago. Back when he was president at Princeton, his university, he was the president of the university before he was president of the country. Back when he was at Princeton, he actually said that his goal was to make men as unlike their fathers as possible. He was trying to basically pull them out of their family unit and make them into completely different people. That was his stated goal. Now, by contrast, you have teachers that are not trying to teach kids what to think. They're trying to teach them how to think. But that wasn't Woodrow Wilson's philosophy. He was trying to make them into political activists. He was trying to make them into what he thought they ought to be instead of what their parents thought they ought to be. And this has been something that the Democrats have been doing for a long time now. You know, Hillary Clinton had that book, It, it Takes a Village, basically the, the community should be raising kids as opposed to the families that it should be up to the community, the government schools, so on and so forth, that should be the ones that are actually raising children as opposed to individual parents, mothers, and fathers raising their kids. Bill Nye said that if you are going to be a climate denier or somebody that denies evolution, then you should have your kids taken away from you because you shouldn't be allowed to teach your kids that kind of stuff. Uh, we have people like Black Lives Matter that said they want to destroy the nuclear family and they prefer, and this is on their official website, they prefer having a community raise them to, to have a more community-based idea of parenting that our kids belong to us as opposed to belonging to their parents. So this has been Democrat credo for a while, but now we're seeing it happening more and more and more and happening, uh, frankly, much faster with individual teachers espousing essentially the same ideas. And this has been happening a lot over the past week. This is just in the past week. Uh, for example, we had one teacher, a special ed teacher from Iowa named Megan Ginna, who complains that she can't teach her kids critical race theory. Uh, this is a video from her TikTok. Today is the first time our country has recognized Juneteenth. It's a national holiday. And yet I'm getting ready to go back to school in the fall. And my governor has put into place some ridiculous legislation that many governors across the country have put into place, such as I can't teach anything divisive, I can't teach critical race theory, and I can't teach about racial equity. This is at all public schools, colleges, and universities. So, teachers, <clears throat> in the past, We've been activists. After the shit show of last year, we really need to stand up and do what's right for our kids right now. So this is a call to action, teachers. We gotta stand up and fight for our kids because this is bull We can't lie to them. See, you hear what she's saying in there? We have to stand up for our kids. We have to fight for our kids. Basically, she's saying that we know better than the parents. We know better than the employers that employ us at the state. We know what's better for the kids than they do. And so we need to just ignore them and teach critical race theory. You see, because again, they believe that they can raise your children and they can educate your children better than you can. They know what's best for their kids and, and up to, it, it's up to them. And essentially, your kids don't really belong to you. They belong to us. And so it's up to us to teach them the right things because they're obviously 
not getting that at home. And you'll notice that she ended that with saying, look, in the past, teachers have always been activists. It's up to us to do the right things for our kids. It's up to us to fight for our kids. Look, if the parents wanted critical race theory taught, now critical race theory is utter garbage. I've done several episodes on that. We've gone into the background of it and, and why it's incorrect. But without getting off into the weeds into all of that, she is essentially asserting that she, as an educator, understands that critical race theory is good for your kids and we need to give it to them whether your parents or the state wants it or not. It's not up to you. It's up to them. The teachers need to be the activists. And what I also find really funny, and I don't have time to delve into it, but that same teacher has a, a litany of videos that have come out about her saying insane radical stuff like this. And one of them is she says, no, critical race theory, it's not about politics. It's just about the truth, which is hilarious because even the founders of critical race theory at Harvard, the, the people that actually came up with the idea in their book, Introduction to Critical Race Theory, literally said there is an activist branch of it. And here's that same person that was saying, no, 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 critical race theory is not at all political. It's just teaching correct history, saying, no, no, we need to teach critical race theory because we're activists. So you're admitting that it's political. On one video, you're like, no, it's not political at all. That's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to teach accurate history. But then you say, no, we're activists. Therefore, we need to teach critical race theory. Okay, well, you can't have it both ways. You got to be one or the other. You can't say... Well, it's not political, but we need to teach it because we're activists and we need the right political outcomes. All right, well, pick a lane there. But anyway, and then that's not even the worst one. I, there was another example of a teacher in the state of California who, uh, her name's Alyssa Pirro. She teaches high school at San Marcos High in California, and she does not, and flat out says it, does not want parents telling her how to teach. Let's watch that to talk to me about their profession and their opinion on their profession, I would love to hear that. I know very little about anything else in the world other than education, okay? However, if your parent wants to come talk to me about how I'm not doing a good enough job in distance learning based on what you need as an individual, just dare them to come at me because I'm so sick to my stomach of parents trying to tell educators how to do their job. I have never once gone to a doctor's appointment and tried to tell my medical health provider how to treat me. You know why? Because I know nothing about that. I didn't get my degree in medicine. There are several reasons why her analogy there is, is severely flawed. But before we dive into that, can you believe the arrogance on that person? I dare parents to come and tell me that I'm not giving their kid exactly what they need in the classroom. Again, as I said at the beginning of this segment, they really believe, they genuinely think this, that they can teach your children better than you can. That they will give the kids what they need because you're not going to do it as their parent. They are better. They, they, I'm an educator. Worship me. Uh, yeah. I'm an educator. You know, it's that kind of mentality. It really is. Uh, that they believe that since they have a degree in education and you don't, then you must be an idiot. Which, by the way, I find hilarious because I've known a lot of education majors and some of them are great people and some of them, I'm surprised they have sense to get in out of the rain. I Remember, I hung out around a lot of the ag ed majors at Auburn. So I was around the education building constantly. I wasn't an education major myself, but I was around them quite a bit. And uh, some of them are great folks. Some of them are Fruit Loops, just like anything else. You, you got some weird people in some of those departments. You got some great people in some of those departments. But the point is the idea that I have a degree in education. Therefore, no parent of any child can ever teach me about anything or even comment to me about anything regarding the education of their child. Um, don't you think that the kid you've had maybe for one or two semesters, that you probably learned something about how they learn, you probably understand a little bit about how they understand things and perceive the world, but don't you think the person that spent like the first 14, 15, 16, 17 years of their life with that child and taught them to like, you know, use a spoon might have a little bit better understanding of how that kid learns, or at the very least would have some valuable input that you might take into consideration 
not according to this person. Apparently, her mentality is just like, I have an education degree. You cannot possibly tell me anything I do not know about education. And she, she actually gives the analogy of it being like a doctor because she says she doesn't know anything about the medical degree and she also doesn't know anything else about the world outside education, which, by the way, that part I totally buy. And unfortunately, that's true of a lot of educators. Uh, I think that they would be better served if they did know a little something about the outside word in conjunction with their degree in education. That's something that unfortunately is missing in a lot of our educators. But anyway, not to get off on that tangent, they really believe that now that they have a degree in education, that anybody that does not have a degree in education cannot possibly contribute to their knowledge base. The arrogance is just, I mean, radiating off of her. Look. Right now, I have a degree in agriculture communication and broadcasting. Some of the most important, valuable insights I've got into broadcasting were people that never went for, to school for one day in any kind of broadcasting. Some of the smartest, most talented people I know in this field never had an education in broadcasting. I'm right now a master's student in theology. I learn things about Bible, the Bible all the time from people that have never had any formal Bible education. I'm not so arrogant, and I hope I never become this arrogant. If I am, somebody talk to me about that. Uh, but I hope I never become so arrogant that I believe the weight of my degree outweighs any knowledge or any kind of outside information that might be pertinent to me that someone else might have. But apparently that is the place that this teacher finds herself in. And ultimately, the thing that is important to remember here, and I think as a parent, I'm not a parent, of course, but a lot of you listening to this program are. The thing that's important to remember as a parent, if you were to encounter somebody making this argument, is to remind them that they are your employees. That is what a teacher is. They are a government-assigned assistant. The task of teaching children falls on the parents. It is your job to make sure that your child is educated, not the teacher's. Now, the teacher is a government-appointed assistant to that task, and there's a lot of fantastic teachers. Remember, I'm not against public education. It put bread on my table my entire life. My father was a teacher for 27 years. I was around teachers. I worked there over the summer. I, I am as engrossed in the education system as anybody could be that isn't actually a teacher. I, I did teach very, very briefly and decided it wasn't for me, and that's fine. So I have been a teacher, but I'm not gonna you know, compare that to somebody that's been in the business 20 years. I'm not saying that I have that level of expertise, but I'm saying for somebody that isn't like in that world, I have about as much experience with education as anyone. That still wouldn't make me right or wrong, even if I had no experience in it, but the point is I do. And I'll tell you right now, all the good teachers that I knew, the ones that were really good in the classroom, that their students liked them and their students really learned things from them, they were ones that loved parental input. My dad was one of them. Even the parents he found annoying, and there were some of those. He respected the fact that they cared enough about their kids to want to be involved in their kids' education. And when they gave him advice, a lot of the times he took it. Or he at least took it under consideration, if nothing else. And when you're looking at this person just spouting off like this, they have to remember that they work for you. They're your assistant, not the other way around. You are the one that is the expert on your kid. You may not be an expert on education, but you are an expert in your kid. Probably more so than any other person other than your other parent, your, your spouse or whatever. And so it just amazes me, the, the level of arrogance coming off of this person, because I've seen firsthand what good teachers look like, and I can tell you that ain't it. People that believe that they've already arrived, that they've already learned as much as they can, and nobody that doesn't have a diploma, the same field as they can, they, they can't possibly learn anything from a person of such lowly status of not having an education diploma. That's a person that can't be reasoned with, and it's also a person that has completely thrown out any form of critical thinking. 
But what this all boils down to, whether you're talking about the schools trying to go around the parents to be able to vaccinate them, the schools trying to slip critical race theory in there because they believe it's what's good for your kids. And since they're not going to get it at home, they have to put it in because they know better than your kids for you. Or somebody like this that says they actually don't want parents input in education, that you should just turn your kids over to the state and then they will fill their minds with whatever they deem those kids need to know and you need to shut up. All of those boil down to the same problem. This is at the core of all of that. And that is, it is one more inst uh, institutional attack on the institution that God put in place, the family. It is the most basic building block of the society, the good society, the civil society. The family was always at the foundation of all of that. That at the end of the day, it didn't really matter who was in office. It didn't really matter what the political leanings were at the time, because ultimately the power resided most in the individual and in the family. And they're trying to get rid of that. They don't like the fact that families have all this autonomy. They don't like the fact that you get to teach your kids whatever you want. They don't like the fact that your kids wind up growing up with similar belief systems that you have. They hate that. And that's why they're trying to undermine it. This is just a few of the iterations of what ultimately has been the attack on the nuclear family. And I believe it's an attack that is devised directly from the pits of hell. I mean, if you were the devil, there are two institutions you should focus just about all of your time on. Getting rid of the church, getting rid of the family. And he has been very active in both of these pursuits. But to be honest, even though he, he's been very successful in a lot of his attacks on the church. But I think he's been more successful on the family because ultimately, I think the devil knows that the church is not going away. Like Jesus even said it, and he has yet to be proven wrong. And so it makes sense that he would spend most of his effort trying to break down the family. And if you stop thinking about families as being individual units where there is a, a father that is accountable to God, that is the head of the household, there is a mother that is accountable both to God and her husband, and she is supposed to bring up her, her children with compassion and with a reverence for God. If you break down that unit, the church is going to be pretty injured anyway, and you're going to be able to bring down the whole country just by breaking down those individual allegiances. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?